Welcome to the Power Platform Show. If you like the show and you've been enjoying it for a while and you want to be a supporter of the show, please go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash nz365guy. Love to hear from you. Now, let's get on with the show. Today's guest is from Perth in Western Australia. She is a part of a company called Seven Sigma Business Solutions. She's a senior consultant there. Welcome to the show, Terry Comsey. Thank you, Mark. Very pleased to be here. Very, yeah, honoured to be here. Good. Speaking to you. It's so good to have you on the show. And, and of course, today we're going to discuss a, a favourite topic of mine at the moment, which is around design, app design, particularly when it comes to user interface and user experience. But before we get there, tell us a bit about my three favourite questions when interviewing somebody the first time is always family, food and fun. Oh, family, food and fun. Mm, yes. Okay, so family... I have got two kids. Mm-hmm. They're pretty grown. So one one is twenty two, mm-hmm. and the girl, and the other one is a sixteen year old boy. Yeah. So, you know, they're kind of hands off at the moment. They do their own things, which is pretty good. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> so Paul and I <laughs> can relax a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Food-wise, let me see. I eat anything. I love food. So I will eat anything as long as I don't have to cook it, pretty much. <laughs> nice, I, nice. Yeah. terrible cook. <laughs> uh, I have probably like a, two two dishes that I can cook well. Yeah. But otherwise, not much else. I would prefer someone else to be in the kitchen and me just coming along to eat. I like it. I like it. And so what do you do when you're not working? What do you do for fun? Okay. It used to be woodworking. Is that right? Yes. So imagine so I'm I'm so you can imagine I am I'm a hundred and fifty six centimeters tall. Mm-hmm. Not very big. And getting out there, creating something with a, a plank of wood and then making it into something that is usable. Mm-hmm. I love it. And and I can still remember going, you know, to the, the Bunnings, for example, with yeah. Paul. Mm-hmm. And um, I'll be asking, oh, have you got this tool? And, and of course, they'll look at Paul and then answer him. And he'll be going, <laughs> oh, you know what? You just talk to him. I don't know anything about it. Yeah, so yeah. It's that kind. So I, I do like, um, I mean, I, I'm not very good at it, but mm-hmm. I, just, I just love getting into the shed and, and then putting something together out of nothing. Nice. But it is a little bit time consuming. And these days, since COVID, I think along with everyone, it's plants. Yeah. I will go. Yeah, just, just fill the house with plants. Um bit similar to food. Mm-hmm. I like I like plants, but I don't like looking after them. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how that works, but yes, I just that, that that's pretty much my thing at the moment. Just I love I love looking at plants. Um um and I'm into hydro plants so nice I yeah kill I like everything in soil i bring mm-hmm. stuff new stuff home and within a week they kind of die on me <laughs> so I've, I've discovered a way that will keep my plants healthy and happy i and like it. shoving yeah shoving them in water i like it i like it so how did you move from family life or was it pre-family life that you got into technology how, how did technology become part of your career path okay so I was a nurse for a very very long time wow yeah nice my, my background is nursing mm-hmm. and having a geek Paul Colsey he you know uh, he's a bit of a geek technology geek there mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. constantly coming home telling me all the stuff that he does, and I'd used to humor him. So, you know, I kind of nodded and said, that's interesting, but have you considered, you know, have you considered doing this type of thing, having no idea what the hell he's talking about? Yeah. But, yeah, and then what what started me on pretty much was, I guess the first thing was, like, nursing, handover, mm-hmm. process, you know, between shifts, you know, you come together and you do a handover. Mm-hmm. It was, I found it was so tedious repeating the same thing that – you know, that, that are static information and we would have this blank piece of paper with a list of patient names and their doctors and that was it. But all their history, all the stuff that there which are relevant weren't on that. And I would, you know, go to bring up IT and say, hey, can, can I have all the, you know, the, the history in there? And as well as, you know, the, the blood work. So don't, we don't have to repeat everything. We just then, yeah, yeah. you know, 
tell relate what's relevant for that shift so people you know people are aware of what's going on what the changes are mm-hmm. and it's like oh we can't do that we can't do that with a system and i'm thinking that's just so tedious and inefficient mm-hmm. so i went home talked to paul and then you know it was me just say oh let's just do it on an excel sheet of paper or just a form mm-hmm. and then we we would print it out so i did that and it worked really well um apart from it being excel I'd, we'd had to change it um manually but mm-hmm. at least that gave us quite a lot of time we wasted like you know one person's time in doing it yeah the change wasn't that much um but unfortunately being a public hospital change wasn't going to happen mm-hmm. so the other thing that i found with nursing was all the incidents that we were having you know you, you have to record all these things that happened accidents incidents needle stick yep and they were all paper based and that frustrated the hell out of me because we had to you know the nurses would fill out the the forms and then call the doctors and then call the managers and then they then we'd have to you know they'd come and assess and then someone else will come and assess and then we and for me I'm going okay well you know my ward has had so many incidents I want to know what's going on you know the trend and all that but yeah. I wasn't getting that so it kind of frustrated me so I got home and Paul's going you know have I'll show you SharePoint, I'll show you InfoPath. Mm-hmm. And that's how it kind of started. Wow. Him, him um, giving me kind of lessons in SharePoint, how that worked, how I could use it, and then how InfoPath, I could use InfoPath to capture all that. I brought it to to my manager and she's going, mm, that's not going to change, sorry. <laughs> so, wow. so it did frustrate me a lot. And yeah. then I started helping out. Paul and his partners part time, and mm-hmm. I got to learn SharePoint that way, mm. uh, and, and I enjoyed it because I could see, you know, from the data coming through and what that would look like. Yeah, I just like seeing the not just capturing the data, but the ability to prevent things. You know, looking at at what the reports say and then predict what might potentially look. You know, where you could concentrate your I guess your effort to decrease an incident or improve certain things. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and then over time, I did this full time, quit nursing, and did this full time. Wow, I love it! I don't know, don't miss nursing at all. I miss the people <laughs> definitely, but not nursing as a whole. So, tell us a bit about what your day to day looks like now. Okay, I kind of wear a few hats within the company because we are a small company. Mm-hmm. Probably about how many people have. 14, 15 of us. Mm-hmm. So my day um, involves, it, it can, you know, includes, in, in the one day, it can include sales, include budget management, mm-hmm. um, UX, um, and um, what else does it include? A um, bit of scrum, um, just managing the team, agile. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Of, I guess, you know, um, coaching them on that side, but the yep. team's pretty good with the uh, agile process so yeah um it's a, it's a mixture um it could be three different three or four different roles in one day or one day it could just be the two yeah but it's yeah. kind of exciting in that way it's not just the same thing over and over again it's good it's good variety yeah definitely now i know that you know well i assume that you have moved on from infopath and and power apps and power automate and these type of tools are now more on your radar is that right Definitely, yes, yes. I haven't touched InfoPath for a very long time. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me, from from what you've observed in, in your time in the business and working with customers and things like that, why is design important when it comes to app making? So, and I'm, I'm really meaning from the user interface to the user experience, why is important to create good front-end experiences? Okay, so I guess... You'd have to differentiate between the UI and the user experience design, mm-hmm. I guess, of the the app, the solution versus the user experience. From for me, I mean, these days, depending on who you talk to, some people kind of um, integrate the two into one, and mm-hmm. it's just UX as as a terminology. Mm-hmm. But for me, there's a difference. I could have um, a really good looking design. Mm-hmm. In, Place looks fantastic, but the user experience may not be the best. Yeah. So for me, I think they both they go hand in hand because 
psychologically as humans, we, we think that something that looks good is going to work better. Mm-hmm. It's going to be more user-friendly. Yeah. So they're more likely to, to go and ex- experiment and use that solution because you know, beautiful is, a, is good. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. So if you, if you design something that is, doesn't look as nice, there is a little bit more work to, to engage with the users to say, hey, you know, let's, you know, it, it's, it's, it works really well and it's really simple to use. But mm-hmm. There is that huge blockage mentally um, from the user's perspective. Yeah. It's not going to be a, a good app because it just not, doesn't look nice. So, yeah, it is very important for, for both um, to be – it's hand in hand. It goes – if you're building something, it needs to look nice and yeah. fresh and simple as well as um, easy to use, intuitive. So, yeah, for me, it's it's one – it's all in one. But the, it has to be differ- differentiated um, between the two, but they they work hand in hand. Yeah. So, so when you think about the skills now that make them a modern app team, you know, it's it's – uh, you know, my experience has been traditionally in the role of the developer. So a software developer would write code and, and create an app. And then, of course, we've come through the the age of the citizen developer, which is taking components and stitching them together. And, of course, in, from both camps, they've not necessarily come from any, let's say, a design-first background. Because if you if you take a traditional uh, designer, you know, that uh, that has been formally trained in graphic design, they have a totally different way of looking at something. Do you do you think we've now moved into the point or the maturity level with, with things like um, the Power Platform that there's a greater need now to have um, designer uh, a designer, and that can be uh, uh, let's say the two facets: one, one that creates experience. So you know how something gets done is 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 critically important to that experience uh, of the user, and then of course. Then, you know, handing over to a user interface designer that makes sure it's, you know, the best way or the the best looking experience, um, the best looking front end. So, as you say, it makes it look attractive. Do you see that skill is now, uh, you know, in in uh, from a priority perspective, more and more that companies need to be focusing on that? Oh, look. I've seen a few apps, uh, especially around the Power App side, have a certain look. Yeah, Power Apps look. And I mean, for me, my, my thing is, if I'm designing something, I don't want it to look like Power Apps. So my, yeah, my one thing is, so it looks like any other app rather than ah, oh, that's a Power Apps. Mm, mm, mm. But going back to your citizen developers and designers, um, a lot of people now are very. I mean, they they are using apps everywhere. Yeah. They, they, they live I mean, pretty much everything on their phone they, or apps. Mm-hmm, so they mm-hmm. have a very good feel for what um, a design, a good design is themselves without yep. knowing. And they may not be able to verbalize it, but they they know what looks good, functionality, how, how that experience should be. So that means from a, I guess, from the designer's perspective, they need to lift their game as well mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because there's a lot more expectation on from the user's perspective. Um, but when it comes to the designing, I find that, um, and in feedback from our other developers as well, uh, when they're working with the business, they, you know, that they have, because that they themselves have, you know, they are using the apps, they themselves kind of rather than letting our team um Say so, okay, shall let's try it this way, and then the experience and test it out. They'll, they'll sometimes they'll dictate here, mm-hmm. like, yeah, and then it's this color, and then we'll, we'll then have to work hard to say, well, you know, the button there, you may not need the button there, because yeah, yeah, all that. So you, then you, you kind of have to work hard to explain to them, say, okay, that might not be a good idea because the colors may not be right, mm-hmm. or the flashes, mm-hmm. or that it's a bit too busy, but but at the end of the day. Um, We've had clients who are saying, no, that's what we want. And yep. they'll come, you give them what they want, despite the fact that you're saying, oh, you give them your version as well. I mean, yep. You're listening to what they need, um, your version, and then what they want to change. And yeah, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And eventually it's like, oh, we'll go back to your version. So it's a, a lot <laughs> yeah. of that as well, because they, it, it's, I guess it's normal because 
they are learning as well. Yeah. So they're experimenting yeah. as well. So we've we've gone through, you know, as a de- designer, you've gone through that experimentation yourself. Mm-hmm. But for the business, for the users, where you're developing that solution for them, they want to experiment as well because they haven't gone through that process. So it's a learning curve, I guess, learning experience for both sides. So in considering app creation, what are the elements of design where when you go through that process are, are kind of things that you would go through and, you know, check, 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 or like check off that that is important in creating uh, great app experiences? It depends on the audience. It depends on the, the solution, the, the intent of the solution. It depends on the audience who's using the solution, very much so. So there's no one checklist that I'll go through. So, for example, if we're building something that is for, um, for example, for an audience who is working outside yeah, and they need something that's really simple to use then you know, and, and easy to carry around, quick way so rather than pc or tablet form which may not be safe for them to carry around something Mm -hmm. mobile so we would design it that way and also the lighting outside if they're working outside and with ppe on Mm -hmm. it it may not be the nicest looking app that you want to build yeah not the most elegant one but is the most simple and easy to use for them so the buttons may be a bit more chunky and, and clunkier than you would you would normally build not as elegant um the colors may have to be changed so you know your, your traditional green may not, not look as nice mm-hmm. out in the bright light and the yellow so all those we need to actually take into consideration so it's not just yet yeah, okay here's a solution we're going to build um the, the colors um, are nice looking colors and the size is great and then thickness yeah, it, it very much depends on the situation and, mm. and how we're building that, yeah. But there, yeah. there is. So if it's outside, it's going to be a certain, you know, the buttons will need to be a certain width and mm-hmm. the colours. We can't have this shade of green because it doesn't look green in the light mm-hmm. and it might be a bit glary. The yellow can't do yellow outside in the bright light and we also have to test it outside ourselves Yeah, out and stand there in the sun um, with gloves. So I've, I've tested, so there was one app where, we were building it for a someone using PPE, so mm-hmm. I'm pretty much outside pretending to have all these goggles on. Yep. I've got goggles plus thick gloves um, using the first design uh, and I'm trying to press the button and they're yeah. too small. So yeah, 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 those yeah. little things that we need to take into consideration when you're building, when you're designing all those elements. Yeah. Um, so the, the the contrast, the icons, um, icons as well. So for example, icons. I keep hearing people say, "Oh, pictures speak." A, what is it? A, a thousand words, thousand isn't words? it? As a, yeah, a picture's yeah. worth a thousand words. Yeah, that's, that's right. But sometimes using icons, you got to consider if you put that icon in. Does everyone know what that icon means? Yeah, yeah. So then if if you're introducing something new that is not universal yet, then you'd, you'd have to have a label underneath it until people get used to it, you know, until that takes on. Um, so little things like that I find is very useful within that uh, user journey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I just remember when Microsoft, uh, I think, came out with the ribbon, the word, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure if you remember when they put all icons on yep. the top. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then I remember reading an article or something, a bit of research where when they were doing their uh, analytics, they found that people were still going back to the main menu, clicking from the top and then accessing it from there rather than the new icons. Mm -hmm. That was because people didn't know what they they meant. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so we have to be careful with that when it comes to using icons, for example. What's when when a customer comes to you and you and you begin a, a project, what, you know, kind of step me through at a, at a high level. What's your design process that that you would typically run in, in building one understanding maybe your audience, uh, understanding its application, like you mentioned, if it's a in, you know an outdoor scenario changes it. Step me through your design process. Okay, so it is very much before we do anything about pen to paper. It is mm-hmm. just going out to the the users 
um, and and trying to understand what the what the problem they're trying to solve, or what is it that they want us to solve for them, and understand what they're going through. So, mm-hmm. so it, it's actually quite a, a lengthy process going back and forth to then have that understanding. Lots of interviews, lots of you know talking, lots of seeing. For example, if they're you know. So we, we do a lot of solutions that improve the business process. So a lot of them are still working with Excel, for example. They'll have tons and tons of Excel worksheet that they're going through or using. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, rather than just saying, okay, I need to convert this and here are the Excel spreadsheet, I need to convert this to a solution, do it for me. It is very much, okay, so what's the issue at the moment? What are you trying to solve? And then work, walk through, walk through, so I'll ask them to work, walk through what, for one, what those spreadsheets mean and mm-hmm. how they're using those spreadsheets. So step by step, okay, if you were going to do this, how would you do it currently? What is it that you want you're into doing? And what's the, the issue with that process that you have? So how they're feeling, you know, how long that takes them to do, what the frustration, all those things we 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 capture. And then what they want to achieve is it is it making things more efficient, um, quicker, mm-hmm. um, or just transferring to a digital? They don't care. So I, I guess it depends on uh, on the solu- the the problem they're having and what mm-hmm. they want to achieve. Yeah. In between, yeah, it's it's a lot of putting themselves in you know yourselves in their shoes as well. So afterwards, getting all that understanding, you come back and you I would. Before I put anything, uh, I guess, down, I would imagine myself, okay, so I've got that, I've heard that, and I can feel their frustration and feel their pain. If I was in their shoes, what would it look like? Yeah. What would this do to me? So at every step, I'm always thinking, okay, on the screen, if I was in, in you know, if I was in Mark's shoe, mm-hmm. what do I need to, to see here? Yeah. What would it give me? Why do I want to see that? So, it's good. Yeah. And then you experiment. And every time you put something down, it's always an experiment. You test it on them. And before we build anything, we generally have the wireframes. You know, so, okay, yeah. the, what do you think? Does that fit in? So the wireframes will take them through the steps. And they'll say, oh, okay, um, no, that, that's great. I would change. No, this bit is wrong. This is not how, we, how, um, how it works. And we change back and forth, back and forth until – we get it right. And in sometimes, even though the wireframe's are great, you start building, you know, it goes into development and that first iteration, it could also change as well. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you, you once you get something tangible in your hands, that process, I think your your mindset, um, you've got now something that's working, you can identify with it a lot easier than something that's theoretical. Mm-hmm. So we found that to every iteration, there's something that changes, even though they say, yep, that's how it needs to work. That's, that's great. So <laughs> there's not one project where, you know, each iteration based on what we've learned that the, that the users have said, yep, that's great. We just mm-hmm. need to change mm-hmm. something else. <laughs> so we expect that and, and that should be the norm as well because that's that we're, we're all learning as well because you, you change a process, there are always numerous ways that you can improve the process and and it's the, it's, it's the opportunity for them to identify and improve that process as well as the change to, you know, the, the change the way that they capture it. With the Power Platform and whether you're building Canvas apps, Power Portals or model driven apps, what constraints are you coming across? Now, because, you know, the software is designed to really build anything, there's naturally some inbuilt uh, potential limitations that would be there. Any any kind of stick out in your mind as constraints when it comes to designing for the Power Platform? So I mainly work with Power Apps. I'm not a fan of model driven. <laughs> mm-hmm. It has its uses, definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, um, and portals I, uh, at the moment out of uh, out of the box on the portal side is very limited. To what you can do to make it a lot more user friendly, you do need to have that. Um, a lot more work into it to to, to make it look good uh, and and uh, more user friendly. From a Power Apps perspective, um, I find my one of my bugbears is the gallery that works. So, you know, I'd love to be. You know, we we often work with huge tables. You know, you either have that 
scroll, uh, there's a limitation in the, the way the scrolling works. Mm-hmm. It, you can't scroll down and across um, in the one gallery. It's either one or the other. It's Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then from the user's perspective, the, the pinch and zoom, you know, sometimes, you know, from, if you look at, for example, Google Maps, you're able to yep, yep. point something. Yeah, you, you can't do that in in um, in Power Apps at all. And it can be a little bit frustrating when you're building certain apps that need that functionality. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that's something that we can't do. Um, I, I find the attachment function is a little bit cumbersome. Mm-hmm. It's not the nicest looking one. So there's a, you need to do a lot of work to then to make it look a, a, a lot nicer rather than mm. that big bar that they have. This is awesome. This is awesome. This is gold. This is – I often ask people these questions. They don't give me anything tangible, and that's what I like here. You've nailed some good tangible oh, things. That's because I, I come across it all the time. I'm, when I do it, when I design, I, I, I keep thinking from my end, okay, mm-hmm. I design it one way, and then when, you know, when I uh, – come together or, or I'll do it and then the team will say, oh, mm-hmm. we can't do that in power. Don't forget, you can't. It doesn't look like that in power apps. I'm like, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it, it, it is frustrating at times. Um, the, the other thing is with galleries, right, you know, from a technical perspective, which I have to remember at times is the limitation of how you know, many items you can, can display without mm-hmm. performance issues. So then you have mm-hmm. to come up with a, a different way of designing your your stuff, your tables, and then to to uh, maintain that performance without you know the user sitting there and then well the apps chugging along. Yeah, yeah. This is okay. this is so good. This is so good. I love it. Would you like some more? Uh, have you got some more? Yes, yes. The other one I find is um, probably the highlighting. You know, in the gallery. Yep. You want to hover over, and it that does. No problem, right? As you go through, mm-hmm. and you wanna uh, you 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 want to see what you're what you're looking at, pretty much mm-hmm. um, get item by item, and it will highlight. You can do that, mm-hmm. but then if you want to, perhaps it's a huge because it's a huge gallery. You may not mm-hmm. be um, able to view all the details of of the, that item. So mm-hmm. what we do is, for example, if if you have um, ten items, uh, ten columns, for example, and the name. You know, the name can be quite long, and the, the description, mm-hmm. and then you've got yep. all the other bits and pieces. So, if you can't, if you can't um, um, re- display the whole description, we tend to just do a certain amount, and we truncate it with a dot. Yep, dot, yep, dot. yep, 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 yep. Okay. And then you know, and then the other way is you hover it over, and it uh, the tooltip will display the whole description. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. if you have that highlighting in the gallery to show which one you're looking at, you can't have it. Mm. You can't mm-hmm. have that tooltip. Um, or you can have the tooltip, but then the highlight doesn't work properly. You have to be very specific in where you highlight. Yeah. yeah. Um, where you can have the, uh, where you um, have your cursor to highlight it. So that can be quite annoying. Um, mm. It is not as user friendly as you would like. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. That's good. That's good. That gives a lot to think about. Tell me, just as we wrap up now, what tools or what resources do you use, and do you recommend? Oh, I tend not to recommend them because there are so many tools around that yeah. do great work. So I I have used um, Figma and I've used uh, Balsamic, mainly Balsamic because mm-hmm. I've been using it for years. Mm-hmm. So I've, I've just stuck with it because for for my needs, um, it is it works well. It, mm-hmm. it does what it does. I don't go into the fine, pixel perfect um, design because I'm expecting part of that is my developers to to know that because if I give them everything, then mm-hmm. they'll just take it as is. Part of part of what I expect from our de- uh, our development team is they mm-hmm. should be able to to think about the users as well when they're designing or they're mm-hmm. when developing mm-hmm. something. They need to have the users in mind. Therefore, you know, certain things they should be able to know without me having to tell them. Makes so, sense. yeah, look, there, there, there are tons for free option. Like I say, Figma has, mm-hmm. I think there's a free option there, but there's you know, mock-up and there's InVision. There's tons of, I think Figma is probably the most popular one at the moment. Yeah, um, cool. But yeah, I'm not sure what you use, but yeah, that is me around. 
that's good. We'll make sure we include those in the show notes um, for the listeners if they want to check them out. I always like to wrap up with a few quick fire questions that are very random about life, not about work. Are you ready? Sure. Cross my fingers. <laughs> okay. The first one is what's one of your pet peeves? Pet peeves? Mm-hmm. Okay. I was, the first thing I thought was design. But <laughs> 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 okay. Non work, opening covered doors and not closing them. Nice. Nice. That's a good one. What's your guilty pleasure? Guilty pleasure. Oh, mm-hmm. Kit Kats. Nice. And last one, would you rather have a cook or a maid? Can I not have both? <laughs> <laughs> that's it. I want both. I love it. That's that's a good answer. That's a good answer. Is there uh, anyone you'd recommend to come on a future show? You know, I, I thought about that and I'm not too sure. I mean, there are so many good people around. What a, Someone around, maybe, you know, I, I recently heard um, Matt, uh, Ben, Ben, I've forgotten his name now. He did a user group on estimation agile, uh, for, for agile pro, uh, projects. Was he in WA, Ben? And, no? Where, no. Where is he located? No, he's not in WA. He did, you know, I'm so terrible. Please cut this out. <laughs> yeah. No, don't worry about it. All, all you'll do is after the show, you can uh, flick me his details once yeah, once, once you remember. He, he came. I didn't organize it, but it was part of mm-hmm. my user group, the one that gotcha. I'm organizing, and I can't even remember his surname. I'm terrible. Oh, so it was in WA? It, it, no, he he um, streamed in or via. Oh, okay. Yes, 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 yes. But, yeah, so estimate awesome. for um, Agile projects. So he, he, he took through, you know, took you through traditional way of estimating a project and then mm-hmm. down to, you know, when you start a project, you use certain techniques such as your, you know, storyboarding and, and mm-hmm. various those things. So that, that might be, um, awesome. I think, you, very useful for people. I love it. Sounds good. Thanks, Terry, for coming on the show. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Hey, thanks for listening. I'm your host, Business Application MVP, Mark Smith, otherwise known as the NZ365Guy. If there's a guest you'd like to see on the show, please message me on LinkedIn and let me know why I should reach out and interview them. If you like the show and want to contribute and become a supporter of the show, please go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash NZ365Guy. Thanks again. Stay safe out there. See you next time.